um, my name is Yasuko Tsuchikane, and I'm very, very honored to be here among all these uh, wonderful uh, speakers, um, delivering such uh, inspiring papers. Um, um, thank you very much for uh, uh, Natsu and David uh, to consider me, <laughs> be, be included, and I'm very honored. And um, also, um, just want to mention about why my talk is probably at the end, because First of all, I deal with the late, most recent period, post-war to Japan. And also, I'm going to deal with a uh, type of a, uh, category of art, or you can say media, that hasn't been really um, discussed much, uh, ceramics. So it might be proper for you to just have the last, last segment before um, we have a very, probably, um, interesting uh, discussion. And also, um, my topic is not directly related to the wonderful show that you probably already seen, um, but it's more to do with the many issues that are dealt um, in this very inspiring symposium. And hopefully, um, my show can sort of remind you of some of the very important issues that um, we all talked about: um, uh, problem of public display, cultural encounter, so on. Um, Never before had the status of ceramics in Japan's contemporary society um, uh, been so highly hailed and at the same time fiercely contested within Japan's arts and craft war as in the early decades of the post-war II period, particularly around the year 1951. Uh, this series of debates on ceramics, which unfolded in several domestic art magazines and newspapers, involved an unprecedentedly wide range of art and craft professionals with various specializations and positions in Japan, unconfined by the media. I would like to present my hypothesis that the debates may have acted as a stimulus to widen the scope of the activities of Japan's ceramics world, represented by several major influential specialists such as Koyama Fujio that you see on your, uh, on your right. Koyama was an internationally renowned Japanese historian of East Asian ceramics per excellence, but was also acting at the time in a matter of a uh, number of many capacities, such as a curator of Tokyo National Museum of Art, a committee member of the nation's preservation of cultural properties, a member of Japan Ceramics Promotion Association, and most importantly for my presentation, a participate, participant of one segment of the debates. The situation surrounding Koyama as a ceramic specialist was twofold, in a sense, somewhat contradictory in nature. On one hand, uh, the variety of hats that he wore as a ceramic specialist uh, indicates how intricately multifaceted the identity of a single medium ceramics could be conceived in early post-war communities within Japan. In fact, it was largely this ambiguity of status or one could say infinite possibility that the ceramics as a category of, category of baked clay objects demonstrated from the 1950s through the beyond the, uh, and beyond the 1960s, both in Japan, in fact, worldwide, that made such an extensive series of debates possible. On the other hand, Koyama as, a, as one of the major promoters of Japanese ceramics to the world, uh, preached on and guarded the East Asian centered view about ceramics in the early 1950s, despite the fact that his fundamental stance uh, through his career was to be supportive of the diverse approaches to the medium, which he viewed as a sign of a blossoming state of pottery. What disrupted Koyama's preaching on his East, East, East centered view on ceramics in the 1950s was a sudden confluence of visual information domestic and foreign, which became available to general audiences in Japan about a huge range of artistic lineages in the world through multiple public exhibitions held domestically and elsewhere under the name of International Cultural Exchange. I suspect that the series of exhibitions and the consequent debates about ceramics affected Koyama and those who held a similar view, namely, that these events and debates acted as a catalysis to start Koyama and the others on their departure from a one-sided conviction in the archetypes of ceramics rooted in historical East Asia, 
in to begin embracing the multiple identity as, a, as well as various types of the medium much more fully. This change result in the establishment of two categories of ceramics, traditional and international, within Japan. And it manifested Japan's effort to comprehend the ever-complicated landscape of hybridity and segmentation in the world map of ceramic production and appreciation. The entire sequence of events just described was first triggered by a series of public art exhibitions that took place in France and Japan between 1950 and the following years, and was a direct outcome of Japan's resumption of interaction with the rest of the international community after the country's total isolation toward the last few years of World War II. Right before the end of Allied occupations in 1952, Japan, now a democratic and soon to be an independent nation, was about to launch a series of international cultural exchange programs. They're mostly carried out in the form of public exhibitions sponsored by governmental institutions and newspaper companies, where Japanese contemporary works were to be shown abroad and the latest foreign art pieces were sent to be viewed in Japan. The medium ceramic as a collective category drew so much attention to itself, largely because it was, among other fields of arts and crafts, the first and only one selected to represent the nation in its uh, debut exhibition on contemporary works to be shown abroad after the war. This traveling exhibition, Japan, Contemporary Ceramics, featured 71 works by 49 artists that included Isamu Noguchi, about whom Professor Bartamaki had just um, examined um, extensively, regarding the time when Noguchi was about to visit Japan in 1930s. The selected work by Noguchi for this show came from the group of earthenware that he produced during his post-war residence in Japan for a few years, starting in 1950s. As the inclusion of Noguchi works in the exhibition suggested, the scope and the variety of the selection were unprecedentedly ambitious as a contemporary ceramic show defined as Japanese ceramics in Japan. The most conservative Nitten artists such as Shimizu Rokube the Sixth. The former artists such as uh, Tomimoto Ken Kenkichi and non-affiliated individuals such as uh, Kitaoji Rosanjin and the ceramics showing the latest avant-garde tendencies such as Yagi Kazue and Noguchi were all presented together abroad and to the domestic audience when the show traveled back to the home country the following year. The show marked the country's mo com most comprehensive display of its contemporary ceramic art to that day, and this was put together mostly by Koyama Fujio. In a sense, the most prov provocative aspect related to the ceramic show was not necessarily the way it served as the first example of Japan's post-war inter uh, international exchange, but rather the way it had taken an un unexpected journey which had not been planned at the outset. Initially, concept of the exhibition fit into the framework of nation-to-nation -nation culture exchange, conceived by a Frenchman, René Gorset, a cultural envoy dispatched by the French government to Japan. The exhibition was to be held in the Chernovsky Museum, excuse me for my pronunciation, in Paris, where Gorset served as the director from December 1950 through early 1951 in exchange for the exhibition of French contemporary painting Salon de May to be held in Tokyo in February 1951. Under this scheme, the medium-bound artistic nationalism ethnic identity uh, that were used to serve the early post-war cultural diplomacy worked well. Japan would be the best represented by ceramics, which had its own strong historical pedigree in East Asian technical and aesthetical, aesthetical excuse me, artistic tradition, while France had to be represented by its internationally influential achievements in the promotion of avant-garde and modernism in fine art, exemplified by paintings. Referring to the Japanese ceramic show in Paris, Koyama, who was largely responsible for the selection of the works in the exhibition, made statements similar to the following one several times. I quote, among Westerners, there have been a strong assumption that Chinese pottery is superb. While Chinese pottery went down after the Yuan period, Japanese, uh, Japan still maintains the excellence of East Asian ceramics as a tradition. 
Outside of Japan, there's no other nation in the world where this, may, this many superior artists are creating pottery, end of quote. Koyama, as an internationally acclaimed expert in historical Chinese ceramics from Japan, declared that it was post-war Japan that preserved the greatest artistic achievement, achievement of war pottery, which should be located in the heritage of East Asian ceramic art rooted in China. Notably, his language was not only suggestive of cultural nationalism, partially due to his position to promote the commercial value of Japanese ceramics for export as a part of a post-war economic recovery, as Hida Takuya has recently pointed out, but also curiously nuanced in a manner suggestive of the remains of Japan's wartime culture cultural propaganda based on Okakura Tenshin's um, pan-Asianism. However, what came along next disturbed the seemingly perfect equilibrium and clear dichotomy of East versus West, ceramics versus paintings, and heritage versus modernity achieved in the initially planned scheme of the international exchange. Due to the positive reception in Paris, the group of Japanese ceramic wars was invited to be shown in a town in the southern France, Valérie, where Pablo Picasso had, since 1946, been creating earthenware using the town's local traditional kiln in collaboration with a local Madura pottery workshop. As a result, between July and September in 1951, Japanese ceramics were, where, were shown in Valerie with uh, Picasso's pottery and works by other local ceramists in a large ceramic exhibition. In a following year between February and March, the same group of Japanese ceramics were shipped back to Japan and exhibited in the newly opened Museum of Modern Art Kanagawa one of the country's first museums dedicated to showing a modern art. Here again, they joined Picasso Ceramic Board, three pieces given by the artist as his gift to the nation. The entire sequence of events was well reported by art journalism in Japan. Now, in the mind of art-minded public, the Japanese Ceramic Board, which had been originally expected to represent the nation through their East Asian heritage, came to be temporarily taken away from that context. A new association made with Picasso Pari through the very same medium was suggestive of new possibility in which the scope of internationalism and modernism could be cultivated in ceramic art. What made this course of events more interesting was that through another outcome of the international exchange project, post-war uh, post art hungry Japanese audience had already become acquainted with Picasso's recent pottery. Among the large-scale exhibition held in major cities in Japan in the 1950s, introducing the latest tendency of European American modern and contemporary art, there are two shows that include Picasso's earthenware. In March 1951, 27 pieces of his ceramic work, including the edition of his works produced in the Maduro Pottery Workshop, have been shown in Tokyo, and later, between August and November in that year, more pieces were displayed in Picasso's first major retrospective exhibitions in Japan, touring among three cities. The popularity of the latter show was so great that Picasso, whose involvement with the Cubism had been well known to the limited circle of avant-garde artists and critics in post-war Japan, became the foremost icon of international modernism in art, uh, in art and literature creating a cultural boom among the general public in early post-war years. Unanticipated by ceramic specialists like Koyama was that the medium ceramic became an integral part of the image of Picasso's art among the public. <coughs> the first show introduced in Picasso's ceramic wear in Tokyo had already provoked much controversy due to a single short newspaper review harshly criticizing his pottery that was written by one of the most prominent literary critics of the country, Kobayashi Hideo. His review was particularly sensational because Kobayashi's name was almost synonymous with European art modernism to the general public. He was then about to receive multiple literary awards for the, for the essays that he wrote on modern European artists and writers from the late 19th to early 20th century, most famously on Vincent van Gogh, whose paintings started to be shown in Japan in the early 1950s. 
While Kobayashi was a promoter, promoter of European modernism, he was also an adored collector and a connoisseur of antique East Asian pottery. I'll quote, having been born in a great ceramic nation, we Jap Japanese are endowed with a distinct and unshakable instinct toward the media, end of quote. Uh, Kobayashi declared, he believed that ceramics had to be created with, I quote, feeling possessed by craftsmen who bury their artistic individuality under the power of fire and clay, the end of quote, and to evoke, quote, humble and universal, universal aesthetics shared by thousands of folks as they use their vessels, end of quote. According to this standard, Picasso ceramics were, were mere decorative picture and just a little bit better than amateur rockware plainly created by hot spring vacationists, end of quote. While the number of remarks were made in re uh, relation or reaction to Kobayashi's comments by journalists, ceramic collectors, and modernist artists, the most striking responses were made collectively in the form of a round table in conjunction with the Picasso retrospective exhibition comprising Okamoto Taro, uh, one of the most controversial artists and spokesman of avant-garde art, Fukushima Shigetaro, a notable collector and art critic um, specializing in European modern painting, and Yamaguchi Hoshin, um, a Nihonga artist uh, known for his recent adaptation of modern, modernistic form. What was at stake in their discussion was how to reevaluate, uh, how to evaluate Picasso's pottery either as another example of western central modernism, modernism that championed individual expressions represented by his oof as a whole, or from a completely different standard that they believe was applied by Kobayashi in his criticism toward Picasso's pottery. They call the latter criterion that evaluation of chinaware, or setomono, which had been uh, admired as antique or gotto, produce, collected, consumed, and preserved in Japan and elsewhere in Asia, according to the archetypes of classical Asian ceramics. All the participants of the discussions are supportive of the former stance and scornful of the latter's view, about which Yamaguchi was particularly critical, indicating that the community of ceramics was much more anachronistic than even the most classical camp of paintings, Nihonga. It was almost inevitable that Koyama, who represented the curiosity, uh, the curiosity of Jap Japan's contemporary ceramic at the time, came to be involved in this uh, series of 1951 debates. First, he was asked to comment on his evaluation of Picasso ceramics, which he defined as a product of pottery created under the Western pedigree that was, quote, intrinsically distinct um, from the East Asian lineage in techniques and aesthetics. His separationist view within the pedigree of ceramics divided into the East and the West was much more um, historically grounded than the more ex extreme um, versions of separationism that Kobayashi positioned upon the ethnicity-specific principle applied to each medium. Ceramic, which should be classical in the sense of being Asian, and paintings, which could be modern and European. However, on the more pending issue on how to evaluate Japan's contemporary ceramics for which Koyama felt directly responsible, he could no longer maintain his separationist neutrality, but more openly reveal his anxiety about the problem of how to judge their quality. In two issues of the Japanese monthly art magazine, Mizue in 1951, Koyama and his friend of over two decades, Takada Hiroatsu, a Japanese veteran ex expat sculptor based in Paris, exchanged their opening, uh, opposing opinion about the issue. Having gone to the Paris exhibitions of Japan's contemporary ceramics that Koyama organized, Takada critically pointed out that very quality that Koyama so highly evaluated in these Japanese ceramics work, uh, namely the excellence in techniques that closely, closely adhere to those of the Sang and Yuan Chinese wares, in fact, appears to restrict and standardize the appearance of many of these Japanese wares when they were shown outside of Asia. To Takada, when Koyama cherished, uh, what Koyama cherished within the context of East Asian 
culture ironically worked as a major suppressor of the artistic freedom that these Japanese wear could have expressed more vividly without these restrictions in Paris. Um, the very location which Takada believed to be the home of a more universal form of art. Responding to his friend's criticism, Koyama stated that, quote, to be fair, contemporary Japanese ceramics are the most superior in Asia. Um, and continued to mention about the overall success of the Paris show, which he re regarded as an endorsement of the superiority of Japanese ceramics perceived in the West. However, honestly, directly reacting to Takata's criticism, Koyama admitted that the difference between them in evaluating the same group of Japanese ceramics came from difference in their criteria, the, the criteria that they employed due to their specialization. Quote, while you have been facing the latest trends in the world by meeting with people engaged in various areas of activities in Paris, I have dedicated myself to the pre-modern world of Asia, covered by the soils of Korea, Manchuria, and Northern China, end of quote. I believe that uh, this statement reveals Koyama's new awareness of the possibility to apply different criteria to evaluate ceramics. And interestingly, it almost predicted the way his later activities in the following one and a half decades actually shifted from how he had described himself in 1951 as a discerning archaeologist of East Asian ceramics into a more comprehensive and cosmopolitan mode that also encom encompassed how he had characterized his friend that year, a connoisseur of world contemporary art that includes ceramics. This transformation from one mode to another uh, was manifested in the two broad categories of ceramics, traditional and international, excuse me, that Koyama helped establish through uh, selecting ceramic objects to be designated as such through organizing exhibitions in Japan. Since 1950, Koyama had been a part of a committee uh, developing the system to designate the important intangible cultural properties one of the nation's cultural preservation system to protect artists like artists' skills from becoming obsolete. Under the scope of this system, craftwork involving techniques that are consider, considered necessary and valuable enough to be preserved by the nation came to be classified as a part of a traditional crafts or dental koge in 1953. In the field of ceramic, what was defined as traditional in Japan was in part orientalized by Koyama's personal passion toward and world-class expertise in the history of Chinese ceramics, which he had cultivated since 1930s, particularly through his landmark discovery of the claim of one of the major historical Chinese ceramics, Dingware. As a result, he kept a strong personal interest in promoting a specific group of Japanese ceramics uh, whose, whose ceramists, uh, whose main concerns were to recover and revive the lost, lost ceramic techniques from the history of each East Asian ceramics, and to incorporate the techniques into their works. Ishiguro Munemaro, one of Koyama's best friends, who <coughs> revived the Tenmok tea bowl from the Sun Dynasty and the iron glaze technique from the Yuan Dynasty, was a prime example of this category to which Koyama referred as a neoclassicist. These techniques that Ishiguro had revived from the Chinese archetypes were the key factor that Koyama must have acknowledged and recommended about Ishiguro as a carrier of Jap Japan's ceramic tradition, and who was rightly awarded, in Koyama's view, as one of the first recipients of important intangible culture properties in 1955. It is not clear exactly when Koyama's outlook on ceramics started to change, but a change in his evaluation of Japanese contemporary ceramic became obvious when he acted as a member of the main committee to select work for, for Japan's first international contemporary ceramic exhibition held in the National Museum of Modern Art Tokyo in 1964, the year of the Tokyo Olympics. Regarded as one of the most pivotal events in the country's modern history of crafts, the exhibitions, in fact, exercised a tremendous impact on Japan's porters and ceramic specialists by legitimizing the studies of non-Eastern ceramics, a new scholarly field in Japan, 
and also heralding a new trend among Japan ceramics to actively participate in international trends and movements. More than 100 uh, Japanese contemporary ceramics work, which included traditional works, um, uh, such as that of Ishiguro, were exhibited with an international group of almost an equal number of works by eight cera eight, um, 80 uh, ceramics of, from about 20 countries, including Egypt, Mexico, England, Italy, and the United States. The large portion of international works were uh, selected by Koyama, who spent five months touring, uh, touring abroad visiting each artist, each claim, by utilizing the network that he had cultivated over years through what became, by the early 1960s, a much more connected community of ceramic specialists than ever before. Only a little more than a decade earlier, Koyama had acted as a promoter of Japanese ceramic abroad with a single-minded cultural nationalistic atti nationalist attitude. But in 1964, in a reversal of roles to introduce international ceramic art to Japan. He confessed that, quote, I question whether Japanese contemporary ceramics are really the most superior in the world. Koyama recalled that one of the heights of the world, to his board tour, was his meeting with Peter Volkos, the foremost uh, ceramic artist of his generation in the United States, who has been claimed to have revolutionized American ceramic art through the 1950s and 60s. Koyama claims that, quote, I was moved by his works. His recognition of Volker's ceramics work in the early 60s indicates an interesting twist in the outcome of the series of debates in 1951, based on the gradual shift of trends in the international arena of contemporary ceramics in the West. To a certain extent, as Koyama had believed in the early 50s, the techniques, aesthetics, and philosophy of certain group of Japanese contemporary ceramics had been influential in early post-war Europe, England, and the United States, and was still strongly supported right after the first Paris exhibition of Japanese contemporary ceramics in 1951. Only a few years after the show, some major members of the Minge movement, such as Yanagi Soets, Hamada Shoujin, and Bernard Leach, and also independently, Kitaoji uh, Rosanjin tore among multiple cities in the United States, drawing attention of large crowds and students. On the other hand, just in the manner in which Picasso ceramics became a topic of art world in 1950s in Japan, <coughs> among Western ceramics, his pottery also stirred controversy around the same period. Picasso's pottery reserted the Mediterranean lineage of vernacular and ar archaic ceramics that had not been evaluated and therefore appear unconventional and refreshing to Western porters. The popularity of Picasso's noble approach to the lineage of Western ceramics started to gradually replace the previous fight of Japanese ceramics as a major inspiration for Western ceramics through the late 1950s to 60s. Volokas also underwent this shift during the time. While he attended one of the Minge lectures in Los Angeles and was heavily influenced by Rosanji, he also took a decisive departure from the Oriental mode to a more avant-garde artistic mode in which, he interaction, he, uh, in which his interaction with artists from abstract expressionism and his fascination with Picasso pottery spoke more strongly in his work. Under uh, this consideration, Koyama's evaluation of Volokas in 1964 served serve as another confirmation that Koyama's outlook on ceramics also took a similar path from traditional to international. The entire exhort, starting from 1951 through 1964, should be understood in relation to the modern history of ceramics as one branch of crafts which has lately grain, gained much attention among historians of art, crafts, and design in Japan in their discussion on the boundaries and hierarchy among artistic media. In their debates, crafts, which have its, its strong historical roots in domestic visual culture and practices, have been singled out due to their particularly unstable identity and position in relation to painting, sculpture, and design, which they think can be more comfortably defined by Japan's modernization, westernization, and globalization. Among various fields of crafts, however, ceramics distinguishes itself as a carrier of distinctly modern self-reflections about Japan 
in relation to elsewhere in the world in areas such as national, national ethnic identity, cultural politics, and related ideologies such as colonialism, cultural nationalism, and Japanism. The episode was a telling example of how all these related ideas embodied by the particular medium ceramics were challenged in a complex process of post-war globalization. Thank you. <laughs>